In this example, we're going to discuss how we can identify multiple linearity in an SPSS regression estimation. We're going to replicate the analysis performed in Chapter 4 of Gujarati's book, Econometrics by Example. We're downloading the data from the Gujarati website, and essentially what we have is an estimation of what factors determine a married woman's hours of work in the labor market. We have a number of variables, including the hours worked um, by the woman, and subsequently a number of variables relating to the age of children, the educational attainment and wage from previous earnings. We've got the um, family income, the husband's education, and we've also got the educational status of the woman's parents. So what we're going to start with is actually estimating a regression model. And because we have so many variables here, it's likely there may be some multicollinearity between the variables. So we're going to discuss how to interpret that. So in order to perform this type of analysis, one of the first things one would generally do before even running the regression would be to look at the pairwise correlation between the variables. We can do this by selecting Analyze, Correlate, and Bivariate Correlations. Now, what we're interested in doing is including the variables which we are interested in. So we typically won't include all the variables in our data set, just the ones that actually are important to us. So what we're going to select are hours, our two variables indicating number of children. We're also going to select the age, education, and the wage of the um, woman. We're going to select the husband's hours worked age, education, and wage, and we're going to select the family income. We're also going to select the federal um, tax rate, marginal tax rate, the mother and father's education, the unemployment uh, variable, which is unemployment rate in county of res residence, and experience variable. We add these to our variable list, and we select OK and we produce the following output. So basically this output correlates each variable with every other variable that we have selected. So for instance, hours and hours obviously has a correlation coefficient of one. Our correlation coefficient will lie between plus one and minus one. The closer it is to the absolute value of one, the stronger the relationship between the variables. What we want to observe is a low level of correlation amongst our explanatory variables. So for instance, we could look at um, kids under six correlated with kids over six. You can see a correlation coefficient of 0 0.091, which isn't very strong. Okay, we can also look in terms of correlation of kids under six with age, and we seem to see that as people get older, they have less kids under six. A relatively strong correlation coefficient. We can look through all our tables and what we're looking for here is anything above 0.8 could signal to us that there could be potential multiple linearity between those variables. So for instance if we look at family income and we look at the marginal rate of tax we see a correlation coefficient of 0.884. That's quite high. Okay, So this may indicate that there might be collinearity uh, between these two variables, which could affect our regression output. Now, this is prior to running the regression, and one might re-specify your proposed model following this in order to correct for potential problems. What we're going to do is press ahead and look at, once we run the regression, what can we do after the regression is run to analyze potential problems? So we're going to actually run our regression, so we're going to analyze regression and linear. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the dependent variables, which is hours worked. And we've included the same independent variables as we had before. Now, what we're going to do here in order to assess potential collinearity problems is we're going to select statistics. And we're going to ensure that collinearity diagnostics are selected. By selecting collinearity diagnostics, what we're essentially asking SPSS to do is to generate our tolerance factors and our variance of inflation factor. We select continue and we select OK and we get our regression output. Note that the regression output looks identical to the ones we've had previously in terms of we've got a sig value for our F-test, we've got our R-squared coefficient, 
We've got our table of coefficients. We've got a new table here, which is collinearity diagnostics. But what we're going to be particularly interested in are the collinearity statistics associated with the coefficients table. And what we have is tolerance and VIF. We're going to be interpreting this VIF, or variance of inflation factor. Basically, the variance of inflation factor indicates to what extent a particular variable is contributing to multicollinearity issues within our data set. The higher the number, the bigger the problem caused by this variable. And a general rule of thumb is that numbers in excess of 10 indicate a very strong multicollinearity problem. We can calculate the average VIF as the average of these to give an overall indication of the extent of multicollinearity in our regression. Now we noticed earlier that the marginal tax rate was quite highly correlated with some of our other variables. And this is represented in the VIF as well as the value of 7.2. We can actually see it's the highest VIF we have in our regression output. And this indicates that this might be contributing to multicollinearity problems within the regression. Now, a good indication of whether multicollinearity is present or not, without looking at the VIF, is actually having a high R squared, but very few significant coefficients. In our case, our VRFs are not above 10. Our R squared isn't overly high, and we have quite a number of significant coefficients. But what we're going to do is talk about how we could perhaps reduce the multicollinearity problem within this regression. One of the st most straightforward ways is to re-specify our equation. So essentially, exclude variables which we believe would be highly correlated with other variables in the model. In doing so, what we're doing is reducing the potential for multicollinearity. Now we have to be very careful here when we do this that we don't actually exclude variables which theoretically should be in our model. And this could cause specification bias if we do this. So for instance, we might have a strong theoretical justification for including a variable in the model, and therefore dropping it from the model is not matching our theory. So what we're going to do is we're going to re-estimate this equation, excluding variables which we might theoretically think cause multicollinearity. Okay, so what I have done is we have gone back into our analyze and regression, and we've removed variables which we think may cause collinearity problems. So we've re-specified our model to match table 4.7 in Bucciarachi's textbook. Essentially, what we've done is we've excluded the variable on father's age and or education and mother's education, as these could be highly correlated with the daughter's education variable. So for instance, a daughter is more likely to attend college if their parents attended college. We're also going to exclude uh, the number of children over six, because we're not sure whether this will actually be significant in terms of theoretical justification for including or not. And we also might expect a husband and wife's ages to be correlated, as people are likely to marry around their same age. So we're excluding these variables, we're respecifying the model, again we're ensuring that our collinearity diagnostics are selected, and we press OK and we get out our new regression equation, okay? And this regression equation matches up with 4.7 in Bucciarachi's textbook. What we can see is that we've reduced the VIF in some of our variables. Marginal tax rate still is relatively high, but we've dropped the actual level of collinearity. Now again, we have to be careful in terms of whether we believe we have a strong theoretical reason for including variables in which case we might wish to keep them in the model, even if they're contributing to collinearity. So when we actually run a regression, there's two things which we should do in terms of multicollinearity. The first one is run correlation matrices to test whether, before we run the regression, we could see any potential problems occurring, and subsequently to include this variance of inflation factor to identify which variable, if any, is causing multicollinearity problems. So we test using a correlation matrix, and we test using a variance of inflation factor. If we have a VIF in excess of 10, or a correlation coefficient in excess of absolute value of 0.8, this may indicate multicollinearity problems, and we can drop some variables to alleviate this problem. 